cells. Who already knows what a femtocell is? Well, some people. Um, it's a talk about, let's say, next generation um, mobile networks. So um, it's a very interesting stuff and femtocells especially are part of, is a part of hardware. Um, that is also part of the research that is done in the Asmonia project that Enno mentioned in the morning. So let's see what Kevin and Ravi have to tell us about femtocells and uh, femtostep into the holy grail. Okay. Uh, thanks for the welcome note. So my name is Ravi and my colleague is uh, Kevin. So we're gonna tell you how the next generation mobile, device, uh, mobile <coughs> devices are really secure or not. So most of the guys you don't know about exactly femtocell, only 5% guys know. So I will just give the introduction about the femtocell and how, you t how people buy it or how in how many countries available. I will just give a brief introduction and how we're able to break this device with step by step. So about the telecommunication history actually. So till uh, 1950, there were no mobiles anywhere. We were just using the simple phone lines and everything. Then after 1980, we got something like 1G to just talk on the talk on the phone or something. Then in 1991, we got a GSM uh, in Europe and it was also li launched like, for a CDMA in USA. So they, they don't use any GSM kind of thing. But uh, somehow it was broken. Uh, we already know how 2G is broken and what are its flow actually. That's why they introduced 2.5 is a GPRS. It's only for the data uh, connections actually. Then they um, patched 2G and it's like an advanced version covering all the security flaws and having new features and increasing bandwidth in a 3G network from 2002. So in Europe generally we have a UMTS and CDMA uh, 2000 in USA. And basically after that you, will, you have seen the revolution in the mobile internet how, uh, from 3G. Then we have a 3.5G which is already known as a HSTPA which has a higher uh, bandwidth. You can download, you can stream your video much faster using this technology. Then we have 3.9G, it's generally referred as LTE WiMAX, but nowadays all people are considering LTE just as a 4G, but exactly it's not a 4G. So LTE advance is completely considered as a 4G or WiMAX 2 we call exactly, uh, and which will be the next revolution in this box. And we already have seen or already the research is going on. There are some femtocells which are, uh, which are based LTE femtocells, these are called, these are called actually but we haven't, go, but they are, I mean, these boxes are not in the market till now. So, and how the GM, uh, UMTS architecture looks like. So, we everybody knows mobile, which we have already now. And this is the architecture, like on the buildings, we see the microcell or the mobile tower, which is uh, generally called Node B. Node B is a term name in a 3GB standard, actually. We refer it as, as a Node B. Uh, and we have a radio network controller along that side. So this is a kind of part you see on the building or somewhere else actually. And behind that, all the signaling and connection goes towards the uh, core signaling network. This is like SGSN for the packet switch and this is for the circuit switch where the, all your ca calls are made or established or even the divert. Uh, this is very, very simplified picture because it's general, it's very, very complex. And if I show you the bigger picture, so it looks like something like this. So after this, uh, Signaling system, we have the authentication system, VLR, HLR, who manages your uh, call record, billings, and everything. Uh, and even for the SMS gateway, we can transfer, uh, which exchange the SMS there. Uh, then coming towards the micro cells. So I told you about like, these are the cells we see, home node B. Initially it was of the huge size, which was seen in the, in the buildings, which requires huge, which, which required huge power, 24 hours exactly. Slowly, slowly, we have seen these kind of devices. They reduce the size where you can own these devices having really two kilometer, right? These devices? Yeah. Two kilometer range, you can put this device and you have a two kilometer range, uh, very good signals. Then, then it comes like these kind of devices, very small, uh, Pico cells actually. Uh, and nowadays, and they are also becoming cheaper and cheaper. I think price of this, these kind of devices are very expensive, that's why the and it has to be maintained very properly, maintenance cost and uh, even the manufacturing cost is much higher. <laughs> so this box you can nowadays get in 3,000 euro. You can have it th those boxes. You can also have a, play some open source tools on it and you can have your own GSM network, practical test network at your home or maybe at your workplace, exactly. And recently, it's like uh, two, two or three years ago, about two, three years ago, so 
commercially, these boxes have been launched, which are called femtocells, uh, which has very short range as compared to. And uh, last year, Ubiquis, a company name called Ubiquis, they launched one more femtocell, like cell devices, which are called atocell. Uh, and they advertise it as a, for iPhone. So if you have an iPhone, you can buy these kind of cells. So whenever you travel outside of your country for uh, roaming, in, in a roaming scenario, you can buy this Atto cell, you can connect in, uh, these devices to your laptop in the hotel, and you can have your own network in the hotel. Like if you go in room, and, uh, but your network is from Germany, so you can have your uh, T-Mobile in Italy, and you can have all the local call inside only your hotel room. So they are trying to advertise these boxes, but we haven't seen in the commercialized that any operator has launched these devices till for now. But also in February, they recently launched new devices, which are exactly of this size, actually, which are called USB-based femtocells. Like, it's very, very small size, but we haven't seen. I have seen the module in the Mobile World Congress, but we haven't seen exactly uh, how it works and its architecture. So what is femtocell exactly? So it's an access point. Basically, you can put, your, put in, your, in your home, and you can uh, connect your mobile, and you can use it as a completely normal cell. So it connects your mobile phone to 3G network. There, are, there is also a company called HSL who provide 2G femtocells, actually, but I don't think so any operator. Uh, we, have, we haven't seen any while that any operator launching 2G femtocells uh, in the market. So, so far now, we have seen all the uh, femtocell boxes, which are completely 3G. So this is a box of Vodafone femtocell, which is available in UK, actually. Uh, this is one more femtocell having a little bit uh, much larger size. So this is recently launched, I think, in last year in uh, last year in UK actually, and this was, I guess, 2008 product, right? Longer. <laughs> yeah, 2007, 2008. 2008 yeah, 2007 like or 8 exactly. Uh, and uh, there is no distinction that you can you cannot connect any mobile to this to uh, this uh, access point. Uh, there is already a technology available called UMA, which is uh, already available in USA. In that also, your mobile connects to your hotspot, like a Wi-Fi hotspot, and after that, your connection goes to the telecom signaling, telecom network, actually. But those phones really require to be have a feature enabled, like a UMA feature enabled inside your phone. So the, there is a restriction for those kind of technology. But with femtocell, you don't need to have any kind of uh, restriction. So any, 3G, uh, any phone which can support 3G, you can connect to this uh, cell. And it has a very less coverage, like less than 20 meters. So if you connect your neighbor and you can use this femtocells, and max four to six users, you can connect this femtocell at a time. Uh, very low power device, easy to install. You can just buy and no need to do anything. Just plug your power supply and Ethernet cable. That's it. And its technical name is Home Node B. That's a 3G standard name. But generally, some companies provide uh, Tell it as like femtocell access point, FAP, or uh, just a femtocell name. So what are the advantages, actually? For user, uh, basically, why company or why this invention has been occurred? Because most of the time, user stays at a home. So after working eight hours inside your company for 16 hours, most of the time, you stay inside the home. And when you stay inside the home, you don't need to be connected to the mobile towers. So for the operator, it has been good. If they provide you these boxes and you connect to these boxes at your home, you can be offload from their tower. So they can increase this capacity of tower and all the users can, uh, when, at, when they are at home, they can connect to this box. So they can increase their data capacity in much larger way actually and, uh, without, uh, and reducing the price. And they provide very high bandwidth, can provide location-based services. Already there are two or three companies which are trying to develop some applications based on Femtocell, like an app store kind of thing. So they have applications like if you buy this Femtocell, they commercial, some companies are commercializing and advertising like this. If you buy this Femtocell, you can ask, you can add your uh, children's number or your wife's number to this Femtocell, and when you are at the office, and if, you are, uh, if your wife uh, came at home, you will automatically get SMS from Femtocell at your mobile that your wife is at home or your children is at home. So they try to commercialize this Femtocell, adding new applications like this. But some people still debate, OK, Wi-Fi is much better than using uh, femtocell at home. But there are some already debate over this issue. OK, it can drain your battery a lot or something, other advantages, actually. And advantages for the operator, as I said, extended coverage, of course. 
user will get really good connection on your fo mobile phone, and when if the user is using a much more data at home, of course they can generate more revenue if you are using a more data. Then, of course, traffic offload. That's why they introduced these products to to offload the traffic of current sales and uh, increase the uh, data capacity there. And there is no installation cost in this product. So, like, uh, we bought this device something hundred euro actually. Uh, but in US, AT&T already give these boxes completely free. You can just go and you can say, I don't have any coverage at my home. They will say, okay, take this box, install at your home, and you will have a full coverage. You don't need to switch the operator. They will say. Even in Japan, SoftBank also provide these boxes completely free. So price of this device is very low. So they don't need to, uh, so there is no cost to produce these devices. No maintenance cost also because these devices can be configured remotely. And uh, with new apps, they can generate some new revenues uh, by reducing the cost also. And these boxes have a backend IP connectivity, which nowadays all the operator loves. Uh, they love very much uh, IP connectivity. So it's a great opportunity. Uh, okay, so it's about sales. So why we taken this topic to research actually? So in classical way, we don't have any access to the sales to play around. So what's the security there? which kind of uh, encryption are my all calls are very uh, secure, they are encrypted, uh, and not all phones show that when you make a call, not all phones show you that your call is encrypted. There are a few mobiles which show you that when you make a call, some symbol occurs and it's displays that your, uh, your call is encrypted, but all, uh, all phone doesn't have any security. So we, uh, so we think of, Okay, let's this time try to research some, uh, try to do some research on these boxes because this time we have access. So these two things are combined in a single box now. So we can play around this box and see what kind of things or protocol or messages are exchanged towards the telecom side. So we t well, that's why we try to research into it. So and so that's a femtocell architecture. So I will explain what are the parts. So basically, you buy, you set inside the home. This is a mobile. Any mobile can connect to this femtocell directly. Uh, from here, you provide your Ethernet connection or any broadband connection which you have at your home. From here, connection goes to operator side, which is in, inside their network. And this line goes to IPsec, so nobody can eavesdrop and check what packets are going inside. So the communication between operator and your uh, time to sell box, which is at home, is completely encrypted, so nobody could s see it. After that, connection goes to a security gateway, of course, which filter all the traffic and only allows the packets which are coming from this box. Uh, once the packets are allowed, IP6 packets, uh, role of security gateway to divert all packets towards the, uh, it's called HNB gateway, which has all the functionality to authenticate these boxes. So the boxes will authenticate by HNB gateway and it will uh, parse all the traffic and divert towards the classical. So this part is completely a classical telephone signaling system where the traffic goes to MSC or SGSN or after this HLR and all the telecom resources actually. Uh, but they also have a kind of server which is for the authentication purpose only. So they can authenticate uh, users which are connected to femtocell by using directly having a different server which for the authentication or this server can be a part of HLR. HLR is uh, classically a home location register where all your information of SIM card is stored exactly there. So whenever you try to make call, all your SIM card information has to be verified or authenticated in HLR. How to get these femtocells? So at the moment uh, from our research, so you can have this femtocell in uh, different countries, that's in 12, having uh, available from different operator. 18 operators provide this functionality at the moment and many operators are already in development stage. Many have uh, already trying even the LTE development test also. Uh, so, uh, okay, but at the moment, all the operator will say, if you buy FEM to sale, you have to also take a SIM card, which is really, des uh, which is really designed, at least in our, in our case. So when we buy FEM to sale, we have a specific SIM card which we can put in mobile, and only that SIM card is allowed to connect these boxes. But some operator has total freedom that any SIM card can connect to this box. Uh, uh, yeah, and some operator provide completely free, or you have to make a contract and you have to pay per month for this service. But as I told you earlier, that some operator com provide it completely free. So you can take it as completely free. So just go and uh, take a box and try to do some research. 
Okay. Uh, so I will tell you some things inside the box. So the location verification is important for this box because in classical system, if you guys know, all operator can trace your location. They can tell you the exact location of you from where are you making call or from wh which location you send SMS. And for this same reason, they have to be locked this femtocell to a particular location that they should identify the location of this box uh, anytime. And right now, roaming is not possible with this box, so the location verification techniques play a very important role here. Uh, and of course, they don't want to, you to take this box right away uh, outside of your country and have a, all local calls. And you all guys know that you, your girlfriend or wife always have a contract that you guys always make a call and all are free. So whenever you go anywhere in the country, you always talk free. So they don't like it actually, actually then. So they prevent you to, make a, to avoid roaming calls. And also, uh, that's, we have a problem with all the operators own their own frequency license. So if I take this box and if I play in India, so T-Mobile doesn't have any kind of, or Vodafone doesn't have any license to emit this frequency in India, actually. So some license conflict will be there. So they don't want to take this box outside. So that's why they have to detect the location and check whether the box is at the exact place or not. Uh, and also, location of user is required for the lawful interception. I will tell you in detail about the lawful interception later, actually. So how, how they detect these boxes? OK, you might have guessed that, OK, if you connect your broadband connection to this box, of course, the first thing, first thing comes, that's the IP address. Based on the IP address range, they can detect, OK, the box is, is, is in Germany or maybe outside of Germany. Uh, first thing is very simple, uh, is very easy. Second thing is GPS, which the standard says. The standard says box should have a G GPS, but it's up, up to operator which things they can add. So far, we have seen all the femtocells which are available in Europe. They don't have any GPS inside it. Only the femtocells which are available in uh, US has a dedicated uh, chip for uh, G GPS where they can detect the GPS location. But G with GPS, there is also a problem that if you are at the inside, the GPS signals are very weak at home, so it's not a very reliable solution. Uh, so the third is very effective. That's why they use it. It's for the capturing the surrounding microcell information. Uh, so cells, so microcells means what exactly? So when we turn on this femtocell, it has a chip, dedicated chip, which scans surrounding 2G and 3G signals from the surroundings. So all the towers outside of this building always emit these three parameters, MCC, MNC, and location area code. That's a mobile country code, uh, mobile network code, and location area code. So all these towers emit these signals. So this box can capture these three parameters and send back to the operator, and which tells exactly in which country I am in, what are the surrounding operator sales, and what is my location area code. And they have a huge database of this information, and they can, based on this information, they can uh, find out latitude and longitude, and they can exactly map you or exactly locate you. Okay, this box is at the moment at this place, and you are making call using this box. So that helps exactly. Uh, so in short, I can tell you how to circumvent these methods. The first I tell you about IP is very easy. You can use any proxy. You can use OpenVPN or something, any tool to just show you are, you are using the same IP address. That's very easy. It's so not very difficult to break. Uh, second thing is, uh, okay, second thing is uh, how to avoid GPS thing, actually. So in the market, you get some kind of jammers like this. If you go on any Chinese website and if you try to buy these kind of devices, you will get in 15, right? 15 or 20, very cheap price, actually. You can get a GPS jammer and you can jam, jam the GPS signal. In the same way, for the neighboring microcell information, you get a 2G or 3G jammer uh, on a such website. So just buy these jammers, turn it on, put near the box, it will block all the signals. So this box will not scan any surrounding microcell information. Mm -hmm. So it blocks. It doesn't send anything at all to back to the server then. Uh, or third way. Like we have seen the uh, nano BTS there. Actually, in the cell uh, revolution, uh, this box costs 3,000 something. So you can take those boxes which can emit MNC, MCC, and LAC code. So we can fix the setting of my home. OK, this is location area code or something. I can replay those content, and box will detect the same content. So it will show, OK, I'm on the same place exactly. So it's, uh, it's a w easy to spoof again then. And for our research, we did all the research inside the cage. That's like a trusted environment. So nobody could detect 
uh, what we're doing maliciously or something. So we perform our, all the experiments inside the cage. And we were able to uh, trick all these methods and use a femtocell anywhere, actually. That's easy to circumvent all these things. So for the next uh, part, how we hacked the box, how we rooted, uh, and what malicious things we see inside, my colleague will tell you. <clears throat> femtocells, they are meant to be cheap, installed at home, and they are really cheap. There's a femtocell, that's the hardware. Uh, most of the time, they have a CPU, uh, the internet connection, an FPGA. It's not always an FPGA. At the beginning, it was an FPGA to, uh, to have the encryption and so on on it. Uh, nowadays, it can be included in the CPU itself, and it's very reduced. And then some SIM cards. All the femtocells come with a SIM card, and the SIM card, like in the phone, is there to, uh, to identify the femtocell. Like in the phone, you identify the user. Um, on the other side, you just have antennas. So that's the antenna for the, um, for the 3G signal, that's the antenna for the 2G signal, and that's all the RF chip. You see it, it's shielded, so very, very cheap hardware. Can you use this one? Yeah. First approach, how, how to test the security, and the, like always on an embedded devices, how you test it, you, you scan the, net, the network, you see if there's a web page. So we scan the network, there's only port 80 open, the web is the, the web interface, but the web interface has some credentials where you put in. We don't know the credentials. Even the, the clients, even the operator doesn't know, or at least the service provider doesn't know that there's a, a web page. Um, it's not interesting at all. Um, then you look at the board itself. On all the boards, you have some JTAG or some serial. There is a serial also in it. It's near the, the CPU. So we connect to the serial cable. But we got no login prompts. It's blocked. There's no login prompts. At the beginning, it's very secure. So all the ports are blocked. The web interface, there are some credentials. On the, on the board, the, there is no login prompt and so on. But First impressions all the time are not very trustful. Femtocells, like I said, very cheap, so they don't want to send some, some, opera, so, some guy repairing the femtocell if something is broken. Normally, they do it on big antennas. They have some special guys. They pay a lot of money for the maintenance cost. Here, it's cheap hardware, no maintenance cost. You have a recovery procedure. And the recovery procedure, when you press it, it's just install the whole software, the factory software, then it boots and connects to the operator, uh, some small operator, to get the real images. And that's where we, where we attack using the, the recovery procedure, if this one is secured. To start the recovery procedure, there's always a button somewhere. Press three seconds the button, and the recovery procedure starts. This is a somehow detailed analysis of the recovery procedure. So at the beginning, it starts some, some special kernel who connects to the operator, it gets the recovery procedure itself. So the recovery procedure is not on the femtocell. The, on the femtocell, there's just some, some mini application who gets the recovery procedure. Then it starts the recovery procedure. Um, at the beginning, it gets a parameter ephemeral list. These are two importants. You see it's important because it uses HTTPS. On, all the, on almost all the other parts, getting the firmware and so on, it uses HTTP. Here, HTTPS, parameter and firmware list, the parameter list defines the configuration of the femtocell. Who is the operator, uh, and a lot of stuff we'll see later on. And then the firmware list, it gets the firmware list, it checks each firmware, if the firmware is different, like if it's broken, get the new firmware, and install it. All the firmwares are encrypted and are signed. So it's not very useful to look at the HTTP traffic, because in the URL itself, they use hashes. You don't know if it's the kernel. You don't know if it's some root recovery FS. It's some hash. It's encrypted. It's signed. It's in very secured. Uh, every, and every time it flashes, it notifies the, the operator, OK, now I successfully flashed this version, and so on. But a lot of problems arise. First, when it uses the, um, when it gets the recovery procedure. Here it gets it over HTTP. It's also encrypted and signed, but if you play with the URL, you get the unencrypted version. It's still signed, you cannot change it, but it's unencrypted. And if it's unencrypted, you can read all the recovery procedure. And that's how we, we made this diagram, this one, just by looking the, the recovery procedure program. So that's the, the first critical part. Second one, HTTP, it doesn't use mutual authentication. 
only the fentanyl cell is authenticated. So we use the credentials on the, of the fentanyl cell and we connect to the, to, we connect to the server to get the list. And in the same way, we can just fake the server and the fentanyl cell will not authenticate the server. So we can provide any lists. The lists are not signed. They only rely on HTTPS to be secured. And that's, that's, how, that's the problem. Again, we have the lists. So when we, when we can give the list, we can change the parameters and we can give our own firmware list, where the firmware is allocated, the signature, and so on. So here we also fake the, here we also fake the, the BTS and provide our own firmware. Because, because we have the lists, uh, of the previous firmware, of the original firmware, we could also grab it, dec um, dec dec decrypt it, and look in it and provide the images. Like always on the sample cells, it uses Linux, but the source code is not available. So we cannot compile our own images, we use their images, modify them, and provide it. Um, another more critical flaw, actually at the beginning, um, everything is checked. So if it's encrypted, it's signed. So if it's not the real recovery procedure, it will not accept it. But you can even inject, inject your own public key to the signature. So you, uh, even when the recovery procedure starts, you can give any image with your own signature and with your own public key, and it works. And that's somehow some huge flaw. The parameter list we've seen. Um, it defines the femtocell itself, so PCB ID, what type of PCB ID is, the email, the MAC, the hardware flag, which is important, and here's the public key. This public key is used to check the signature of all the images. So if we can provide the, the parameter list, you just provide your own public key, and then you can provide your own images. The hardware flag defines the, the mode of the femtocell, if it's used for commercial purposes, for trials, or if it's used for development. So if you change the hardware flag to zero, like for development, voila, you get the, the, record, the, you get the root login again. Use the serial and you log in. So that's the architecture. It's, it's really inexpensive stuff. You just, have the, you just provide the configuration parameters, you provide the, the own image, the own firmware list, and you provide a modified firmware list. We got the firmware before. We just modify it, add some software, and give it again. And this is how we've, we've been able to flash the device itself and to completely take control of it. Uh, but it's not, you can say it's not really interesting because it's just a, a device, it's just another network device, it's like, like a router, hacking a router. But the, the implications are more important than any just router because that's the element of the, net, of the telecom network who put it at home. So once you have this, you can access the telecom network and that's the critical part. They're putting some security in it, encryption, signature, but if this one fails, then you have control of it and then you have access to the telecom network. When we analyze the images, we also find some, so there was the first hardware, uh, there was the first web interface, not interesting, it just showed the status. But there is a hidden web interface provided by the vendor of the femto cells where you can set anything. You can, so you can see the status itself, but you can also say, please send on this frequency, please, be, please this operator, please connect to this IPsec, and so on. At the, the, the operator, the real operator itself, used this, fem this um, this interface to configure it or to play it. And that's, that's somehow nice to have the control of, the, of, this, of this interface and set anything. Then, like I said, we have access to the, to the network itself. I think you can show the demo. Um, can show the demo. Oh yeah, we can, yeah. we can show a demo. So you can show you the, how we root all, uh, all those things. Uh, can you switch to yellow? Yellow. So that's the femto cell. We, uh, we sold it a serial connection, but actually you don't you don't need it. It's just we use it for for the beginning to show how, uh, to see how it works. But the the, fly, the the flashing itself it's only over the network. So as soon as you have control over the, the network, you can provide your own images. You can do everything without tampering with the hardware. So here we see we boot takes a lot of time to boot because it's some small, small hardware. And now we have the, the, the login. The password is not really hard, it's MD5, so we can reverse it. 
MD5 is not so secure, we can crack it, but you can also brute force it, it's, it's really small. And here we see that we have the root access, nice, but we also now have, so that's the, the, the installation, all the servers are done on a virtual machine. We do everything on virtual machines because it's easy to use. Now we can have access to the web interface. So use the space first. It's, it should be on. So that's the web interface, and as we see, we changed the, the, the logo changed. That's our logo. That's where we work. And normally, you should have the credentials to enter the, the web the web interface, but it, you don't need. You just have to click two times the same link to refresh it, and then you have access. You don't need any credentials. And here you can see the status, but here you have the engineering mode where you can say, okay. I don't want this one to sniff the 2G networks or the 3G networks. So instead of using Jam or anything, I, uh, he can just turn off here right over here so it will not scan surrounding signal at all. Or which type of femtocell cellities or what the neighbor are. I mean, you can change everything that defines the femtocell with, with this web interface. There's also the database where you can interact itself, but the web interface is a lot nicer. And the more interesting is, uh, go on the cell properties, hotspot. Yeah. No, it's, it's in the general. Yeah. yeah, and this is really, really interesting stuff. So right now this box, so in the standard, standard says there are three modes to access this box. Close mode, open mode, and the semi-open. What does close means? Close means uh, operator will only add subscriber to this femtocell. So if you want to add your wife's number, you have to tell, you have to call operator and say, please add my wife's number. So they will add this number automatically to this database exactly. Uh, in open mode, this box will behave like normal base station. So any user can connect to this femtocell and use it. So completely open. Hotspot, they can install. Uh, so in open access, it's also called hotspot kind of actually. Semi-open, it, it depends actually uh, which operator has to be allowed or not. And, and in open mode, literally, uh, this femtocell can accept any mobile user. Like if you have a Vodafone femtocell, it can also allow to connect to T-Mobile user. It can also allow to connect O2, O2 user actually. And you, are, you don't need to do anything. So it will just act any connection. And here you also deploy the category. Just go back. Um, to do the general? Yeah. And here deployment category. Yeah, yeah. That's hotspot yeah. enterprise. Hot, hotspot and enterprise. And there is also some new firmware we have seen, which is for the enterprise, where you have a company address and all this list of uh, uh, enterprise companies, users, which are connected to the box, phone number, and everything you see in this deployment category. The cell configuration, this is where you tell which operator you are. Normally, you, you are only, uh, the, it broadcasts only the, the operator, you buy it, but you can change it yourself and create other femtocell and say, oh, I'm Deutsche Telekom or I'm AT&T and so on. Back to the slides. Is it green or yeah. green one? Yeah. So that's the web interface. Uh, we we have access to the femtocells, and as we see, there's a lot of structure in the home manage, home node B management server. Uh, a point is the performance measurements. All the B node Bs and home node Bs log the activity and report every hour. Okay, uh, during the last hour, I had two kilobytes of voice traffic, two megabytes of data traffic, and so on. We now also have access to web server, so all the FEMTA cells dump the, uh, dump the results in there. So now we have the IMSIs and the email of all other FEMTA cells deployed by this operator, some privacy issue. So and basically what we got access to their uh, FEMTA cell infrastructural uh, server architecture, which I show in the uh, first picture, like, that's the server. There is one server that's called HMS server who collects all those reports of femtocell. Like they deploy 1,000 femtocells and all the 1,000 femtocells send those reports to that server. And we basically got access to that server where the all information was stored and the information consists of this table. Yeah. Some other services, the operation, administration, and management server, it provides the, it provides the new images if the, uh, if the operator wants to flash it. So we have access to all the images, to the old ones, to the new ones. We could also push our images. So this procedure is not like the, rec like the recovery procedure. It's a bit more secured. We didn't find any hole yet, but we didn't analyze it truly. And if we can push our images, we can tell all the FMTA cells, take our images. And the images are on the server. The HMS server is providing, it's um, for the provisioning. So in the provisioning, it tells the FMTA cell which, um, 
which phones are allowed to connect to it. We can get the provisioning of the other femtocells, so we can say, uh, for this femtocell, we know that this number will connect to it, and so on. Also some private use threads. Changing the setting, we already shown it. Add some f new phone to the subscriber, change the configuration, and more privacy threats. We have location, you wanna do it? Okay, uh, the picture is not clear exactly. So as he told you, we grabbed this information from the performance measurement server. So this MC, IMEA, and cell ID. Cell ID is important because all this femtocell emit a unique cell ID from where you can exactly try to locate where the femtocell. Uh, and also, so what are the privacy things? As I told you, like some phones show the encryption, like when you make a call, they show that, okay, the call is not encrypted, so they show a signal directly. So what we did, we turned off the encryption on this box and said, don't use encryption. And, and it, do, it, do, it does the same, actually. So the call was un unencrypted. We tested on the normal network, the symbol was not coming. So the call was encrypted there, and this call was not, uh, uh, this, was, this call was unencrypted. And this, fi this fi uh, figure is interesting. So what this figure is exactly, so these are the location of femtocell boxes. So right now I have just shown three, but we can also show all the femtocells which are owned by operator. So we can exactly tell these boxes are exactly as those location. So we also had access to other femtocell. We grabbed the, their exact location information and we map here exactly. So we can show all the femtocells are uh, in this area. So this was a map and these are the privacy threats. Uh, second was, was eavesdropping. Of course, we can uh, check what kind of traffic going in uh, from this box to operator. So like if you send any SMS to your wife or to any friend actually, uh, we, we check all the packets. So we, we exactly, we locate the SMS. So that's uh, SMS actually. You have to know that um, they say the, the, the calls are encrypted. Actually, they're encrypted between your phone and the femtocell. As soon as it is on the femtocell, they are clear text. There's no encryption anymore. There's no end-to-end -end encryption or there's no encryption until the operator. It's encrypted to the, until the femtocell or any node B. So if you, have, if you are behind a node B, you get everything unencrypted. It's not just the SMS, it's also the data traffic or it's the voice traffic. So we can record, we can record the voice and we can play back the voice or we can see which web, uh, which web uh, interface you used, which web, which web page you looked at or the data traffic and so on. And what's the interesting impact actually and why we are telling? As I told you, this box can be turned as an open access mode or something. So I can turn this box as open access and I can allow all you guys to connect this box. And what I can see now then, I can see all the SMS, all, I can see all the which websites you are surfing from GPRS packets and even we can record the calls. And you cannot notify at all actually. And also we can change the operator. Like I want to listen to his call and he already have an O2 connection. I can turn my box to O2 and he will have a better signal from my box. Of course his phone, by, uh, by technical things, his phone automatically get connected to this box because this box has a better signal strength. And of course he will not, I mean, he will, he will not uh, get any kind of notification from that, uh, for, for that thing. So we can listen to his call or SMS uh, very easy way. And the second part, accessing infrastructure elements that we already told, like we had access to performance measurement server where all the information of all these boxes has been stored there. So we can try to capture those information. Then the software update, like this server was used to push some new firmware or the new modification to the new femtocells, uh, in which we had access to this firmware image. An interesting thing was before launching a new product, there were, uh, there were already uh, new images of upcoming femtocells. So we already have a source code, but we don't have a box. So that's a bad. Uh, then the provisioning server and uh, femtocells. Of course, we can configure other femtocells, like as, uh, as I show you here in the map information. Once we access those boxes, we can also ask that box, turn off encryption, uh, turn off your operator, I mean, show something else operator or something, anything actually. Or we can just uh, crash that box and that box will not work. So then other guy has to call operator and my box is not working, please do something because even if he try to do uh, flashing or he try to reset this, it will not work because we know how to change that setting so that it will not work or it will not reflash automatically. Uh, this thing, and uh, these are some uh, attacks which are mentioned in a theoretical way in a 3GPP standard. Like these are the possible attacks could do on a femtocell and they analyze very theoretical way in 2006, I guess. So we analyze all things practical, and I think this is a small list. Actually, we have a 
uh, much better than those attacks. So they said, okay, these are the kind of threats and it has impact, harmful, extremely harmful something. So I don't think so. They done this analysis based on practical or theoretical, but we used, uh, we were able to perform these attacks practically and showed, okay, it's really, really possible, even more than these attacks. So conclusion, okay, as we told, this is an interesting technology that all the operators are loving to have it so that they can offload the traffic and uh, try to generate some new revenues with some 3G technologies. Even the LTE is coming, they can provide a much better service to the user, so they are loving it, and they don't need to uh, put some, uh, you know, financial strain behind uh, producing new technologies. But operators need to do their homework as you have seen, okay, what are their flaws? What will the impact if you go in public and if you try to make some different attacks? Like somebody could take just kind of such malicious device, hacked into these boxes, put somewhere into it. Like if I want to check, okay, what my neighbor is talking to my girlfriend or something or your friend or something, you could just hook their boxes and listen to their communication. Anything could happen, something like that. So often needs to do their homework because that's their reputation and they want to keep their reputation. And nowadays, privacy is more concerned. So when you buy things, you always think of your, your privacy nowadays. So that will have a huge impact uh, in coming future. So they have to think about their reputation in terms of security and privacy. Uh, they have to follow specification, like specification says you have to use some kind of trusted uh, TPM or MTM kind of solution to provide better security so that all the credentials which are these boxes uses are stored in a secure area. Even if I root this box, I cannot get some critical credentials. Uh, I, I cannot access critical, uh, critical credential uh, credentials or maybe I cannot access telecom uh, network at all actually. So they have to uh, follow the specifications, secure the device and use the network access. And currently we are trying or about to finish, okay, how we can extend our work and show massive impact which this device could have in the future. So we are trying to get more into the network or trying to find possible flaws or try to provide some new improve uh, suggestions to the 3GP standard body. Okay, so these are the things you have to reconsider uh, these points. Or maybe you can use as a simple MC cacher device which is completely free or you can have in $20 or something. So you can have a first uh, MC cacher device or build some kind of man in the middle attack. Like if you're talking to your friends, I can send some noise into it or just play a song, uh, hi, hello, something like that. So we are trying to produce those kind of things into it also. And trying to push suggestions to the operator. Okay, what things you have to consider if you want to deploy Femto sales, okay, and what things are you are missing inside it. So try to also give some suggestions to the 3GB standard body uh, doing our research in a public area, uh, in academic area also. Also, we've only shown, the, like at the beginning on, uh, of the slides, we've seen that there is some clear distinction between the areas. So we only looked at the access network, what's, what's in there. We didn't look at the core network. We have, the femtocell gives us somehow access to the core network and we didn't attack it. So for now, it's only annoying what we do for the operator, but there's no, there is no cost for them. It's, it's not very critical. We, the operator knows the flow, the vendors know the flow, but they say, okay, in the next version it will be fixed. We don't care about this version and it doesn't cost a lot of money. But as soon as we can get access to the core network, that's very dangerous for the, for the operators. The operators, the telephone operators and all telecommunication network are happy if it works. They, it's not the habit to have something secure. It's not like on the internet. Here the operators have mutual agreement. Don't attack me, I don't attack yourselves. We just want to exchange some voice. Now with the femtocell, if we have access to a core network, like on the internet, we can test a lot of things. We can really attack the network and say, okay, now I want to use for you, your network for free or I'm another operator or reroute the calls from this operator to my operator and so on. We didn't do that at all. We only concentrate on the access network. But the impact is somehow, uh, is somehow critical. That's with the home node being the UMTS, but now in the LTE, LTE advanced and so on, the home involved node B, it's even more connection. So there's no, there is no secret switching anymore. There's just packet switching and there's a bit less security in there. So if they deploy the home involved node B, the new version of the home node B, um, and if they use the, this technology, they, they really have to secure more than this device because it's critical for the, for the core network, for their business, how they own their money. So, Adriana again. 
Okay, so for this one and uh, for our work, uh, our colleague also helped. That's here, uh, Nico Goldie. Uh, he helped us quite a lot because he's uh, quite good in uh, reverse engineering. Also, Colin Muller, who also helped, who is expert in already 2G or 3G communication in mobile field. And our uh, professor, John Pere Saifat, uh, under whom I'm doing my PhD and we both work for SECTI. And Benjamin Mikhail, like these also help us in our work overall. So thank you very much. And So any are there any questions? Oh, wait, one moment. <laughs> would, like, would like to record it. Okay, great. Um, do you know if there are any plans for delivering FEDMO cells in Germany from, from ISPs? Uh, if you Google or if you try to find our T-Mobile Femtocell, O2 Femtocell Germany, you will see that there are some speculation in the media like O2 is launching or T-Mobile launching. But I don't know. So far, there is nothing available in the shop so far. But there are news that or some manufacturer like Femtocell manufacturer, Ubiquis or Contela or Huawei says that, okay, we are testing with T-Mobile or something. But I don't know. But so far, they haven't deployed anything. One question about the HMS server, uh, the home management server. Would you say that there were basic uh, elementary security measures missing that allowed you to uh, access uh, the other um, you know, uh, home eNode B or home node B uh, information? Security was missing, not even elemental security, like the credentials to connect over SSH to the server. It's the same like you use for, to, have perform to get the performance measurements or there are really a lot of stuff that were not secured at all. They just rely that to connect to this Pento cell is a trusted platform and you don't have, to, you don't have access to the, to the home management server. But as soon as you're in there, it's not very, very hard to, ac to have access to their servers or to, to make some, some first. There is no IDS, there is no IPS, there is no, not a lot of firewall. We can, with this Pento cell, we can access to other Pento cells. They don't even block the intercommunication. Mm. Or maybe, uh, addition to that, they might have ideas or firewall, but no strict policies. Like what we tried with Femtocell, so far they haven't blocked. It means they don't have any kind of blacklist, whitelist, gray list, like this Femtocell behaving maliciously, so we should block. So far we haven't seen anything. Mm -hmm. And last year in Mobile World Congress, when I talked with Ubiquis uh, manager, he said, we also get complaints like uh, some people take this Femtocell and use it in somewhere outside in Thailand or somewhere. So they can't do anything. They said nobody maintains black, white list or something or try to block this device. Operator don't want to get money. Like if they are roaming or if they are using it, no problem. I do, we don't want to lose customers. So just let it be. Yeah, when you use a femto cell, you still pay for your communication. It's not because you have the, the device at home that you don't pay with the, for the data or for the voice communication. It's still like you're connected to the, any other node be in the, in the public. So some strict policies. Missing security and policy or something. Security also missing. missing. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Wait, um, Simon, the other mic, please. <laughs> uh, hi. Um, my question is, uh, do you actually think that um, there's going to be much of node Bs around um, as opposed to the e home node Bs? We don't know because the node Bs are stored on a, it's not on the same network. They have a completely different network and we don't have access to them. We don't know how many there are. We can only tell how many femto cells, home node Bs there. And with, from this operator, there are around 3,000 deployed already. But for Node B, we have no idea. It's a complete different network. But from Node B, no, Node, no, sorry, Node B, uh, you means LTE femto cells. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so far in the market, nobody provides. Still, they are doing internal test. Some manufacturer have produced. You can buy for testing purpose or something. But from other operators, no, no product is available in the commercial pro uh, market. Okay, more questions. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Thanks. Pleasure. <laughs>